world of football is filled with prejudices of certain individuals who seem reluctant to change. There are currently 5,000 professional footballers in Britain, but incredibly, not a single one of them has come out as gay. In fact, there has only ever been one openly homosexual football player in the history of the British game who has declared his homosexuality during his active playing career. His name was Justin Fashnew and he was considered a pioneer by most. Justin began his professional career at Norwich City in 1978 and two years later he won goal of the season for his effort against Liverpool. Ryan, Fashnew, oh! In 1981, Justin transferred to Nottingham Forest for a fee of £1 million, making him the first black footballer to command the seven-figure transfer fee. However, things in Justin's playing career began to deteriorate on the field. Blind Clough, Nottingham Forest manager, became disturbed by rumours that his player, Justin Fashioner, was visiting gay clubs and bars, and as a result, Clough banned him from training with the rest of the team. Clough, in his autobiography, gave Justin a dressing down by asking, so why do you keep going to these bloody puffs clubs? Justin was subsequently transferred to a string of different clubs, seeing his transfer fee fall each time from the initial £1 million. In 1990, Justin Fashnew publicly came out as gay in an interview with The Sun newspaper. The Sun newspaper led with a sensationalistic headline, £1 million soccer star, I'm gay, Justin Fashnew confesses. The media reaction to this news was almost unanimously negative. The Guardian stated he was the Walter Mitty of football. The Sun stated he was a predatory gay man. Even worse was the reaction of his own brother, John Fashnew, who was also a professional footballer. John famously disowned his brother, Justin, when he came out as gay, telling the media Justin was an outcast. The money you are being paid, I believe, to my recollection, was about £80,000. So, you know, at the moment, I've got that. So let me give it to you. If it will mean you won't do the story, let me give you the money. In March 1998, in Maryland, the United States, a 17-year-old claimed that Justin Fashnew had sexually assaulted him after a night of drinking and a warrant to arrest him for sexual assault was issued. However, Justin had fled to England to escape arrest. On the 3rd of May 1998, Justin Fashnew was found hanged in a deserted lockup in London. In his suicide note, he stated that he denied the charges and stated that the sex was consensual and he had fled England because of his homosexuality would prevent him from receiving a fair trial. Justin added, I realised that I had already been presumed guilty. I do not want to give any more embarrassment to my family and friends. Jason Hall, founding director of the Justin Campaign, a known organisation for the inclusion of homosexuals in football, stated that, Justin Fashnew forced the world of football to acknowledge that you can love men, whilst at the same time be a world-class footballer. His bravery has created inroads for our community in the football world and has inspired the generation of gay and bisexual men who now believe that we too can be part of the beautiful game. Homophobia at grassroots level is as important as it is at elite level. However, a lot of abuse goes unreported and unpunished. This section will address the extent of homophobia at grassroots level using first-hand interviews with key members of the football community at Durham University. Hello and thanks for doing the interview. How long have you been playing football for and to what level? I started playing football when I was five and I played the highest level I played is women's county level and first team football at Durham University. From your experiences, are there any lesbians slash bisexuals in women fo women's football? Yes, every team that I've played for probably since I was about 15, there's always been at least a few lesbian players. Do you think this at all affects the team dynamics? No, because they're all very open about it and I guess part of it is the stereotype that many women footballers are gay. Do you think sexual orientation has an effect on participation and enjoyment for these athletes? Um, for female, like female lesbians, no, but I think in terms of male footballers, for those that are gay, then yes I do.
Do you think sexual orientation is a bigger problem in men's football? Yes, definitely. Like all you have to do is look on the news and see that there's like rarely any players coming out as openly being gay. Do you think the Football Association are doing enough to include gay footballers at all levels? Um, yeah, I know they're trying to put in a campaign at the moment called Football versus Homophobia and they've got a lot of major clubs involved such as Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool. So I think they're trying but I think it's going to be a problem that needs a lot of work to address. Do you think anything should be done uh, in terms of policy efforts and inclusion? Um, there's only so much you can do because it's such like a socially created problem that is going to take a lot of work so I think all they can do is like just try different attempts so such as a campaign as football versus homophobia and like the rainbow laces it's a start but a lot more needs to be done. Do you think there will be any more openly gay males and football uh, males and female professional footballers in the foreseeable future? In terms of males I don't think there'll be any coming out in the foreseeable future but in terms of females England women's captain Casey Stone captain recently came out so I think that's going to spark others to openly come out as well. And here is Stoney and the captain rounds things off. It appears that sexual orientation is more accepted in women's football at both grassroots and elite level. However, the problem is seemingly still an issue in men's football. John Agle, who has represented Collingwood College E-Team as a player for five years and as a captain for two, agreed to speak to us about his experiences about being an openly gay footballer. Hello, thanks for doing the interview. Nice. Right. How long have you known you've been gay? Uh, I'd say I knew I was gay from about when I was 14 or 15 at school. Does your football team know? Yeah, my football team does know. Uh, I came out as gay uh, last summer and I, I thought it was really important to tell all of my football team that summer, really. And if so, what was the reaction like? Uh, great, actually. Like... Obviously, like it, I've known it for ages, and I've kind of kept it to myself, and not uh, purely because I thought, specifically in a football team, people are going to be hostile towards it. You know, people are going to think of me differently. People are going to think they can say jokes or, or change humour around me, for example. I don't know. I didn't want the team getting taking the Mickey out of for like having a gay captain. So I thought for a long time. I just thought like, oh, it's not. It's not relevant to football, um, so they reacted really well and a lot better than I thought. Do you think there's homophobia in football then? Um, like I'm a big West Ham fan, so when I go over West Ham, um, I hear you hear a lot of a lot of things, but you know you don't know if it, it's specific to being gay, but you know. Um, you hear like, get up you faggot, um, keep going, you if, if if a player is soft in any way, not putting that about, not putting tackles in, I think, certainly in the stands at West Ham, I hear a lot of, st like, little words and phrases like faggot, puff and bender. <laughs> masculine world of, of football, um, part of being a man was being heterosexual. Do you think the FA are doing enough to include gay footballers and do they do enough to stamp out homophobia in the game? I'm not sure that they are doing enough. Colin Kazim Richards made a gesture to Brighton fans or something and I think mm. Brighton fans get a lot of stick um, and I think it was a £750 fine and you just think £750 fine for something that was homophobic yeah. um, because people don't know where the line is between banter and abuse. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. What do you think should be done then? Uh, I don't really know what should be done. I think it always lies in educating people. I think that with homophobia, ignorance is where you see the hatred. It appears from the reaction of the media in the Justin Fashionu case and from the interviews that homophobia is still a major issue in men's football. It seems like it will remain an issue for many more years to come 
without sufficient intervention at all levels. When you hear the subtle digs, the subtle jokes, the the things that I said earlier, the fag, the faggot, the bender, mm -hmm. the puff, the shirt lifter, all stuff like my dad was my coach, all stuff he said, mm -hmm. and my friend said, you just learn to think I am different in a bad way. 